Majabu na siwezi kueleza tenda ya kushangaza ulimwengu umetenda miujiza kati yetu niyo mana unaitwa Jehova ndio mana Majabu bwana umetenda majabu na siwezi kueleza umetenda ya kushangaza ulimwengu umetenda miujiza kati yetu Majabu Umefanya majabu Atuwezi kueleza Atuwezi kueleza Umefanya kushangaza Kushangaza Ulimwengu Umetenda miujiza Oh, you are. 
of the service mm. you are going to do great works in our lives and in our minds and even in our bodies oh god mm. as you prepare us father as thank a you. church for your kingdom oh lord thank you we Jesus. thank you we bless you jehovah Hallelujah. we also want to appreciate my god mm. your servant whom you have appointed this day that he may bring your holy oracles oh jehovah we are jesus. praying in the name of jesus christ that you may release your anointing from on high yes. the lord he may be able to give the ones even in accordance to your will oh god mm. thank you father because you are going to touch his heart you are going to touch his mind you are going to touch even his mouth oh jehovah yes. the lord he may be able king of glory yes. to minister unto us in a mighty way you, in accordance to your will Hallelujah. we thank you and we bless you for all things for in jesus name we do pray in our very uh, altar gospel celebration church, Chuka, this is a wonderful Sunday that we have met and gathered again, and we are meeting from different places. We are meeting with you uh, when some of you are in your vehicles, others are in your uh, in your homes, others are in your offices, others maybe you are on the way or you are somewhere, and wherever you are, I will welcome you so that you can, we can be together, so that we can meet with the Lord together. And today, we are going to look um, at something else uh, that I promised last Sunday, that is how to position yourselves to enable you use the kingdom peace how to position how to position yourselves to, to enable you to assess or to use the kingdom keys and we are going to have our our readings our readings from john by pastor saverio is going to read uh, uh, with us sir the woman said i can see that you are a prophet our fathers worshipped on this mountain, but you Jews claim the place where we must worship is in Jerusalem. <coughs> Jesus declared, Believe me, woman, a time is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You Samaritans worship what you do not know. We worship what we do, we do know for salvation is from the Jews. Yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father 
in spirit and truth, for they are the guide of the worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in spirit and in truth. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends, for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Repeat that scripture again. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends for everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. Amen. Thank you. When you position yourself in a wrong place, when you position yourself wrongly, when you do not do exactly what you are supposed to do and be where you are supposed to be, that means you will not be able to use the kingdom of uh, the kingdom keys of your father because uh, automatically this year has been a very difficult year all over it everybody is surrounded with the we know with with fear everybody is surrounded with anxiety i wonder today even the president of the greatest nation in the world who has said i will not wear a mask I will not be having a mask. Today, I saw him in a mask. He was visiting some hospital and he had to confess against what he had seen before. He wore masks. And this is the he has seen. Things are not the way they are supposed to be. Brethren, this one does not mean that the church is not suffering with those that are suffering. The church is suffering because of the condition. Maybe the church members are suffering, but this one does not mean they are suffering because they are wrong. They have found themselves in a situation where they cannot be able to explain. But my brethren, but the church, you must know yourself. You must know who you are. You must know where, where you belong. You must know who is your father so that you can be able to position yourself. Now, in the portion that we have read, it was an discussion between Jesus and the Samaritan woman who was a prostitute who had come searching for water. And there had some heavy discussions until this woman said, you are a prophet of God. Because this woman brought an argument. Why are you asking me for water? You are a Jew. You are a Jew. I am a Samaritan. We do not, we have nothing to relate with the, with the Jews. We cannot borrow one, uh, one water because even our way of worship and the God that to worship is different. You people, you worship in Jerusalem. We, the Samaritan, we worship in the mountains. And then that one triggered Jesus to share about the best positioning yourself. He said, a time will come, and now it is that when the true worshippers will worship the Lord not in Jerusalem, not in, not in the mountains, not in your synagogue, not the one that you call your altar, just like the way I called this one my altar. Not there. It is not at your home. It is not at that specific place where you are marked. It is not that. The scripture says a time is coming. And now it is when the true worshippers will worship me in spirit and in truth. Now, if you look at your scripture, if you look at your Bible, the, the word spirit, it's not written in capital letter. Just go there and check if, uh, if, if I am wrong or right. It is not written in capital letter. It is written in a small letter. I, I, I don't know whether, I don't know whether uh, that one is, is true. 
uh, you can you can put it there and then we can, you can see God is a spirit uh, uh, you can go um, above there yes must worship him God is spirit and worship him in spirit and in truth now that is a scenario a time is coming and it has now come the right position it is it is not in the mountain the right position it is not in Jerusalem that's why some of us are confused where do I now pray we are where now I have told people you can only ask things on the altar where now I cannot approach the altar I cannot go there I have told people but this is the time that you should know the right position it is in you right in you it is those who will worship inside the place of the Lord to worship is inside you come on say inside me come on say inside me now the scripture says a time has already arrived when the true worshipers meaning that even if you are under the water even if you are in the air even if you are on the bed dying you should know that is the right place to worship is right in you praise the name of the Lord that's why Elisha you remember Elisha when he was sick when he got sick and he was to die in fact it is not like Ezekiel Ezekiel prayed and he was pardoned and he was under the ears uh, uh, this man Elisha was not supposed to uh, to get well and right there they would come to ask they would come to inquire and he was there he knew my body is sick but my spirit is alive my spirit is healthy my spirit is kicking and he used to give instruction from his bed of you know from his bed of death it's just like my 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 pastor when i was in nanyuki he, 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 uh, I, 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 I admired that man. That man under, under condition, he could not, he could not, that, that could not have allowed him to survive for long. In fact, he passed on when he was, when he was barely 49 years. He under hard condition. But this man was powerful. This man was a man of God. I remember one time because I was one of his interpreters. We, we decided that uh, whoever goes to interpret for him should go slow. And then he discovered one day I was interpreting. I was trying to make him go slow because he was a very quick, uh, uh, quick preacher. And then he, told, he stopped and told me, Mr. Motegi, please do not, uh, do not bring me down. Let me tell you, you are not the one that is pounding this heart. It is God that is holding that. And this heart will stop when my maker says. This man, Bondi was so weak, but he was so powerful because, and he was a great worshiper, who had great revelation of the word of God. Let me tell you, brethren, let me tell you, church, wherever you are, know that the right position is right in you. Wherever you are, that's why it could not bother somebody like uh, um, Joseph. Joseph in, in Egypt, he was there. He was all alone. Nobody knew his God. But inside him, in fact, there was no worshiping place for this man. Sometimes we ask, you know, God is wondering. Sometimes we have been hooked so much to our places of worship, whatever we call the places of worship, until we forget that uh, the children of Israel went away in, a, uh, in, in, in such a way they had no place of worship. In fact, Daniel was worshipping from his room. Some of us are going to look for others to help them worship because you think you cannot worship alone. Joseph, uh, I mean Daniel, used to work and he used to go to, uh, to his uh, place, lunch hour, and worship. And he and, uh, left that morning having worship. And in the evening, you will repeat the same. You will worship the Lord. These guys were away from J Jerusalem for so long until they had to find the way. That's, that's when the, the, the worship places we call synagogues were formed because they had to look for a way at least for an altar they are to build and Jesus Christ was telling them the woman 
that now a time has come that the two worshippers will worship the Lord in the spirit and in the truth because God is a spirit. So, have you gotten the right position? Is right. Wherever you are, you are supposed to worship. In whatever condition, you are supposed to worship. You have a key wherever you are. Whatever you are doing, wherever you are, even when you are in battle, bathing, when you are naked there, that's the right because it is inside you. And therefore, it's going to know that. So, now what are the major, uh, I want to share with us four major ways to help you do this. To help you do or position yourself in the right way, uh, in the right place. Four major ways. Today, I will share uh, uh, with you only two of them. Now, the first way to help you to worship the Lord in that right position in you one is to be a co-worker with Christ. Let's, let's see 15 again. Chapter 15, verses 15. To be a co-worker with Christ. The, the scripture said, I no longer call you servants. You must underline that if that's your Bible. Because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. You can also align that. For everything that I learned from my father, I have made it known to you. I don't know who are you to Jesus. Jesus Christ wants to make you his friends. He does not want you to remain a servant because a servant is not aware of his master's business. He is not aware of everything. He cannot, he is not aware. When you are a co-worker with Jesus Christ, is when you have a real, a real connection on how to worship God in the position that is in you. Be a co-worker with Christ. Be a friend of Christ. Now, a co-worker with God means to be bound or yoked together with God. That's what it is. You cannot be a co-worker when you're not yoked together. Just like the two oxen are yoked together, like the two donkeys are yoked together. They are yoked together. That means you cannot, you cannot go ahead, you cannot go below. You have to be, a, you know, a, that's what it means by a co-worker, to be yoked together and that means you are supposed to be yoked together with Christ so that wherever you are you are carrying Christ remember what you did the other day was was Christ with you remember what you talked the other day was Christ with you do you remember what you are thinking the other day was Christ with you were you yoked together is is Christ I know your friend now this one means that uh, when God works you work if he has stopped working, you stop working at that time. When God is working, that means you also walk. If he stops, you stop. That's why we hear of a man in the Old uh, Testament who was called uh, who was called Enoch. The Bible says Enoch walked with God. He walked with God. Uh, for a 300 years he started walking with him when he was three uh, 65 years and he died when he was 365 he walked with God and the Bible says and he was you know he was not seen that God overtook him God walked with him God never let him die he is the first man never to die who went with God a co-worker, a friend of God, so that when God changes direction, you change. Yes, God has changed the direction of worship, 
this year in the whole world. In the whole world. He has changed the systems. Governments have changed. Developments have stopped. Now we are focusing on a name that we do not know. It is, it is only the church who, can, who has got the authority to fight the enemy. You are the forefront as now. It is not nurses. You had the other day a doctor, a nice, a nice, wonderful, beautiful lady, like those of, you know, of my daughters, died. And now the kangaroo is getting buried. And now one of his child, one of our child was asking, if my mother was not a doctor, would she have died? Church, you are in the right position. You are a friend of God. That's why God says, can I hide what I am about to do to my friend, Abraham? Are you a friend of God? Are you a friend of God? Can God really hide things from you? Can he really say to you, this is what I am about to do? You remember Abraham cried to Nebuchadnezzar for the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. And he went Nebuchadnezzar, if at all we find this number of righteous people, can you destroy those people? He said, no until Abraham was left with no choice other than to release God to do what he had intended to do. Again, a servant is a tax oriented. You know, a servant is tax oriented, does not know the master's business. It's a tax oriented man. You do this, I pay you. You do that, I pay you. That is, that is the relationship between a servant and the master. It is task oriented. Are we task oriented? I am not task oriented that I will demand God to pay me. He is not operating to pay me whether, whether I'm his, uh, you know, I am doing his work or not. I am not task oriented. That one will not be my initial fee. That's why I will not be guided by money. I will work. Money will come to help the ministry. And God, I have seen the Lord do that because I am not just a servant. I am a friend to, to my God. You see, a friend is relational or, or relationship oriented. A friend, you are relating. It is not task. It is relationship. It is relationship. You know, there are people who live with their spouses as task oriented. You do this, I do that. I do this. Not in relationship. That you demand that something to be done. You have heard, you know, a wife telling his, uh, her husband, if you don't do this, I will not do that. That, is, that means you are task oriented with your spouse. Whether my wife will do this or not, whether she will do this or not, that is not my business. We are not, or we are not, we did not come together because of some kind of task that we say that we are going to do together. No, it is our relationship that brought us together. Otherwise, if it were not of that, it could not have worked. And therefore, that's why. Because it is relationship oriented. That's why Hata Nikiacha, you know, my clothes with you no know, full of money. I don't care how much money is there. I don't even remember. Sometimes and I end up with and go at a check and I put a mefuria pesa uko. Because our that is not that is not a bother. And that's exactly the way we are supposed to relate with our God, with Jesus Christ, at a time like this. And let me tell you, it, the whole world is looking at us. That's why, uh, you know, uh, the government thought that uh, churches will go quickly to open. Most of the churches are not opening. Because, in fact, the church is now effective more than before. It is, more, it is more effective. They have refused to open. They have said they will continue with the, with the, with the, you know, with, with the, the virtual, uh, with the virtual messages. Because how, how do you do? If I told you of uh, 5,000 5, members, how do you do with the 100? How will you choose? Now, how, how? And they said, no, we are not opening until the time will come for us to open. Maybe the devil thought, now I have knocked the church. He has. He has been knocked out. 
He doesn't know we have gone far. He doesn't know that we have reached many. He doesn't know that he has given us time to even to concentrate more on each individual because that is where the worshiping place is. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes. Now, the second, the second one, it is uh, diligently obedience to God. Diligently, not just obedient. Diligently obedient to God. Let's let's see Deuteronomy chapter twenty-eight, verses one and two. If you fully, the scripture is saying fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow all His commands that I gave you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth. Verses 2. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Diligently obey the Lord. Diligently. Now, if you go to uh, Genesis chapter 12, let's see chapter 12 and verses 1. I want to give you an illustration, just two illustrations. The Lord and said to Abraham, leave your country, your people, your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. Verses 4. So Abraham left as the Lord and told him and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. Now, if you read the Bible properly, it is not Abraham who was supposed to move from Haran to Canaan. It was his father. If you read about Terah, Terah was commanded to do this and he never obeyed and therefore he died in Haran because he stopped. Instead of moving from Ar to, uh, to, to Canaan, he moved to Haran. And you can see, and that's where his father died. And now, he never accomplished his mission. You see, you have a purpose. Some of us might go to heaven when you have, we have done a half of what we are supposed to do. I do not know whether you have heard the Lord. Some of us are retiring well, they are too high, you know, uh, too hurry. They say, I cannot be able to do this. They have stopped doing what they are supposed to do. They are now concentrating on other things. And then Abraham was called to make sure that he accomplishes the mission that he was supposed to be accomplished. And was, Abra you know, uh, Abra Abra uh, uh, accomplished. And we see Abraham was told, move, leave, go. Let me tell you, this is not a simple thing. When you are told to move from where you are, from where you are used to, from where your people are, from where your friends are, from where uh, you, are, you are comfortable with, from where people speak the same language with you, from where you worship the same God, from where people understand you. And then, he is told to move. Let me tell you, some of you think it's simple. I knew it was not simple when I was told the same thing. When I moved from this place, I settled in Anuki. I, I brought my children up in Anuki. They were all born in Anuki. I bought two pieces of blood, one or two and a half acres, the other one two acres, and I went as far as building in one of them. And I think, and I remember when we were moving from town to our rural home, which we had built in Anuki, my wife told the sisters, I thank God that I am sure I will not move again. Barely two weeks after we had moved to our rural 
house God spoke to me don't me you remember 16 years ago I told you this is what you're supposed to do time has come <laughs> you have never seen a hard deal I had the two problems why couldn't God speak when we were in town so that we may move from town instead of wasting our things building and putting all this I had the second problem is that I had promised him I am not I am I had promised her I am not a pastor when we were courting because she told me the worst thing I can do is to marry a pastor so I had two scenarios to deal with it is not as simple when when we read that and Abraham moved and you think it's simple I found it too hard I, I had many questions to God. God, you are taking me back home. He told me yes. The, the scripture is written that a prophet cannot be respected uh, in his own home. And you are taking me home? The Lord told me, have you finished? He told me yes. He told me, I have sent that 100%. That's my word. And this other one for your movement is also my word. Can you move? You have never seen a hand deal. But let me tell you, my family, praise has gone today that we moved. And after years, they looked back and, and saw what, what had tied us. Actually, Ninini Kritu Funga Nanyuki. God requires, if you want to connect with God, you see, and by that, I had to ask very many things you know from God and God told me even before I give you an altar where you build my house I'll give you a land you first before I give myself that's exactly what happened where I'm living today I bought before you bought me let me tell you heaven can open very well you can help you stay in the position of God when you diligently obeyed Abraham moved. The scripture said, then Abraham left the place. He was told, leave your people and your household and your land and whatever and go away. In fact, even when I came here, I never believed I'm not going back. I stayed for nine years before I sold the land that I had bought. Let's see another before I finish, let's see another illustration. Uh, it's about Peter. Now, Peter, Peter was fishing. Peter was trying to fish the whole night with his friends. And in the morning when they had caught nothing, is when, as they were washing their nets, is when Jesus Christ approaches, approaches them and Jesus Christ requested Peter to give his boat. And Peter never, never argued with him. He gave him his boat. He gave out his boat uh, to Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ used the boat as an altar to speak to the multitudes. And this man was not bothered. He was just washing his, his nets together with his friend, but he was there. He never argued with Jesus. He gave out. I do not know what Jesus has asked you and you have given without arguing out, without reasoning. You see, when, when, when you was going to give and you are told God has given you, there you are ready to receive. But when God tells you give this, eh, there you reason whether huyo mungu alikuongelesha nataka kujua alikuwa wapi na alikuwa mungu aina gani na alikuwa mlikuwa na yeye wapi kwamba ulikuwa umefunga ama ni ulikuwa umefanya ili akwambie nimpatie hii gari hapo iende na mchungaji niende mimi it reminds me of my bishop one day, one of our pastors was trying to make some, uh, you know, fundraising of buying a vehicle. And then here, he and his vehicle, the, the premium uh, vehicle, a very, good, a very good type. 
and then God tells uh, tells uh, Bishop, you have to give your vehicle uh, to your pastor that is in a room and it, is, it should reach him before the fundraising is over. He, he, he stayed without the vehicle for some time. It was not a simple thing. It's not a simple thing to obey. You see, God does not ask you, telling you that I will give you back. No. And some of us transact with God. Even in our giving, you transact. Give and it shall be given. That's why we read, isn't it? That's transaction. David says, after they had given, look, who had seen? After, after David had given so much money, they ask, he asked, who am I to give to God? Even because what I have given belongs to him. That's, that's the giving that is, 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 has got some relationship without, you know, with the Like he says, Give and shall be given, shaken, pressed, and overflowing. I can transact with God. I can say, My hero, he requires to me a Maka Ucha. Why do it? I go in Maza. I said, I can be clear. I can't have a piano. 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 I can Mungu alikuwa the first wanaitangwa nini? Yes, the first respondent, the pastor was the second. Don't transact with God. When God is telling you yes, he is do this, he is not to bring for him to do anything back to you. That is his business. And therefore, dear brethren, if you want to put yourself in that position of your spirit, where you will worship him. If you want to walk in the truth, if you want to walk in victory, it is when you connect with God uh, in such a way that you are a friend of God and you obey God unconditionally. Let's stand up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Just to speak to your God wherever you are. Tell God, yes, I have known the right position. Yes, the right position is right in me. It is in my spirit. Yes, because you are made of the spirit, of the soul, and of the body. Jesus told the woman that a time is coming and it is right here with us. When the true worshippers will not worship the Lord in the mountain. We will not worship the Lord in Jerusalem. But they will worship the Lord in the spirit and in the truth. Oh, hallelujah. It is in us, oh God. It is worship you in our spirit. Because, my Father, things that affect our physical, they are spiritual, oh God. And we connect with the spiritual world. It is our spirit that connects with the spiritual world. It is the spirit that connects with the Holy Spirit of God. That's why the scripture says, the spirit of God goes in the depth of the secret of God and brings the secret unto us and reveals what's supposed to belong to us unto us. Jehovah, we thank you. We give glory and honor unto you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I thank you because at this time, my Father, we have miscalculated. We have missed the point. Oh God, as we look for the right position, my God, so that we can be able to have keys for your kingdom and we have had the right position, is right in us. It is in our spirit, oh God. May you connect with our spirit, oh Jehovah. Holy Spirit of God, may you connect with the spirit of uh, this congregation, of this listener, of this viewer, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that personally they will be able to know that Jehovah God in every condition, in every situation, you are with them, everlasting God, even when they are going through things, they kill themselves because they do not know you are right there, my Father, and you are knocking the door of our spirit. And my Father, my God, I declare and I command this listener to open the door for you so that you can enter into his spirit, into our spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ. 
so that Jehovah God, you can deal with haze or a depression, so that you can deal with haze or with a lack, dear Father, because you are our shepherd, dear Lord. You are our shepherd. We are not supposed to be in the water. I declare, Jehovah God, my Father, thank you, King of Glory, for this young man who wants to commit suicide. Dear Lord, my God, I pray that my God, he or she shall open the door of his or her heart, my God, of his or her spirit, in the mighty name of Jesus, and you shall dine with him or her. In the name of Jesus Christ, I can look at this uh, man who is confused uh, about his family, dear Lord. He is almost running away from his children. He is almost running away from his wife, dear Father. My God, I pray that he shall stop whatever you, whatever he is doing and open his heart, his spirit, Jehovah God, for you. And my God, you shall connect with him. You shall connect with him, dear Lord. And my Father, King of glory, you shall help him, Jehovah God, with whatever he is going through. Dear Lord, my God, look at this man who, Jehovah God, has lost his job. Look at this woman, my God, who has lost her job. My Father, I pray you are the giver. May you help them, Jehovah God, to open their hearts, their spirits for you so that Jehovah God, you can position yourself, my Father, my God, inside them, so that Jehovah God, you can dwell with them, dear Father, and my God, their lives will be victorious for the glory and honor of your name. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting God, in the name of Jesus. There are people that have sick people. They are confused, oh Jehovah God, King of glory. There are countries where they are, there is confusion. There are hospitals that there are confusion. They do not know what to do with the sick, dear Lord, because they are overwhelmed. Dear Lord, my God, I pray that they shall open their hearts so that you can connect with their spirits, dear Lord, to give them comfort, to give them, Jehovah God, my Father, power, to give them grace, dear Lord, to give them, Jehovah God, grace, and to give them strength to be able to bear their condition, dear Father, as they connect with you, dear Lord. May you dine with them as they connect with you, dear Father, as they connect with your spirit, dear Lord, my God. May you dwell, Jehovah God, with them. May you, Jehovah God, my Father, deal with their situations, my Father, so that your name will be glorified and you are and their joy may be full. Thank you, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We exalt your name, dear Father. May you be exalted forever. May you be glorified forever. Dear Lord, my Father, we are enjoying. We are enjoying today, dear Lord, my Father, as a wonderful service, Jehovah God, after the reopening, Jehovah God, of worship places, Jehovah God, in Kenya. We bless your name, dear Father. We thank you, Jesus, because we know, King of glory, dear Lord, there is a reason for whatever has happened, dear Master. The God who opens small doors is the God that who opens flood gates. And we thank you, Jesus. We worship you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we believe. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Amen. 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 I want to give you an opportunity, wherever you are watching me from, those that are Gospel post Celebration Church members, on the screen you can see the numbers. Uh, the numbers and also the numbers of our account, uh, and also the uh, M-Pesa number. Those that are our friends who are happy with this uh, ministry of Gospel Celebration Church, and you are opting to share with us so that we, you can help us to continue. Please, you, are, you don't just enjoy messages. You, we can also connect with us. We can also partner uh, uh, with you by sharing some of your well with us so that we can be able to do the works as you gave Lord on our Bariki on the mission on our mission on our mission we can share our Jesus Christ on Bariki we on our mission on our mission on our mission on our Bariki on our tender member for man I am on for man I can move on our wezeshe kandi ya mapenzi yake katika nchini la Yesu Kristo yeye ni Mungu Mungu wa kuelewa uh, those who are in the houses and wherever you are i want to uh, i want to uh, thank God for our giving this uh, evening father in the name of Jesus you have washed out those dear ones wherever they are 
in their houses, in their vehicles, in their places of office and work. Dear Master Jehovah God, King of Glory, others are just waiting for friends and they have been getting on Jehovah God my Father and they have been listening Jehovah God my Father and they have decided to give. I declare each one of them blessed. I pray that my Father, their spirit shall be able to connect with you with the Holy Spirit and their King of Glory. When they connect with you, I know all things will work because that is what is important, Lord. That's why, dear Master, you say you are just right there uh, knocking. Dear Father, thank you. As they, as, they, as they open for you, may you, dear Father, bless them. Thank you, King of Glory, as you also bless the work of their hands, O oh Lord. Those who have lost jobs, oh dear Father, my Father, King of Glory, you are God of maker of jobs. Those who have lost their businesses, Lord, King of Glory, remember Isaac planted when it was a, a season of not planting and the harvest and dear Lord. My God, I want to declare you are meeting their needs according to your riches in glory. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. Jehovah, may you receive this one like a sweet aroma before you for the glory and honor of your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Therefore, I want to say uh, that uh, uh, as we part, we will share the continuity of that uh, topic that we have, uh, uh, the subtopic that we have started today. And therefore, I nataka kuwaaga, nuambia kwamba, God bless you, God lift you, until we meet again the same uh, time, the same place as we share. Amen. God bless you.